starts soon. Um, What's wrong? Shut up. <laughs> uh, so yeah, in a in a little bit here, Rich and I are going to talk about Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Spoiler, all spoilers. We're just going to talk about the whole movie because we've both seen it now. Let me let me get a drink from my throat. Let me let me get Rich something. Is, Rich is gonna. What? Rich is when gonna I, go. When I, when I get back, and you have if you haven't seen Star Wars, when I get back, yeah. you should turn the stream off immediately. That's true. That's true. As soon as Rich gets back. We're going to start talking about Star Wars. As soon as Rich gets back, we're going to start talking about Star Wars. All the spoilers. All the spoilers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, got a little, you got a little peek at that, at that Rich booty. <laughs> that was... That was a... That was a unique stream. I, I really, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't around for Don Wilson. I wasn't there that episode. And so all I got to see was the episode, and I, I remember really enjoying that. So being here with Don, Dan, uh, Harry, whatever his name was. So you guys are going to maximize your game window? It should be maximized. Why isn't it? Why isn't it? Oh, maximize our window. Oh, sure. Yeah, I guess we could do that. Put ourselves. I'll tell Rich to do that when he gets back. Oh, yes, you're right. Talking Star Wars. Spoilers. Remove game. Update. Okay. It is updated. We are now just talking Star Wars spoilers. That is what we are doing. Thank you, uh, Crack Cocaine, for suggesting that we change the title of the stream to reflect that we are now talking Star Wars spoilers. Uh, Tyranny Source Rex. We will talk about that. Yes, but we're not we're not there yet. But we will talk about that very specific thing. Rich and I talked about that earlier. <coughs> Rich, yeah. Your first uh, your first job now that you're back, yeah, is to take us in the OBS window and make us uh, full screen. Okay. How do I do this? Uh, go to uh, go to edit scene, yeah. and now click on face cam. And I see it. I see it. Oh! Yeah. My God! Turn the game off, I guess. You could if you want, or you know, it's just a nice background. You think it's nice? I think it's loud. Wait, well, then just turn the game off. It's fine. If you want it's to fine. turn the game off, hop, hop. Seeing me, I'm on a slight delay. My audio, I'm on a slight audio what, delay. What game has a nice just starting screen? <laughs> I don't know. John Kilo would like to let us know to have a, a nice Christmas and New Year, Jack and Rich. Thank you, John Kilo. You as well. Thank you, John Kilo. Okay. Okay, we're huge now. Yep, we're here. We're huge. Oh, there you go. Oh, no. Remember, this doesn't work. Oh, that's right. We had issues with that. We had so many issues with this. It was a, That was a fine idea. Just find a picture and put that picture. Oh, God. Oh, no. Rich. Yep, yep. That was dumb. Rich. Wait, there's an easy way to fix this. There you go. I tried. Rich tried. Look, I have others. Which one do we want? Anything that says the Star Wars. That's all we need. Anything that's and that's not a DOS game. You can't play it. You can't play a DOS game. Spoilers. Wait, hold on. Start. Star Wars spoilers start soon. <clears throat> Heads up, everyone. And then, by the way, once Rich and I start talking spoilers, yeah, the chat is free to spoil anything. No more, no more spoiler rule. But Un we haven't started until yet. the stream ends because they'll probably do movies. After. Of course, of course. Until the stream ends, and then, well, then that's that's movie dicks. Then they they rule the chat when we're not here. But I'm just I'm just letting everyone know, like as we talk about spoilers, 
we're getting rid of our, our no spoiler rule, obviously, for everyone, not just for us. Yeah. Why won't this game close? The game won't end. It refuses to die. I'm sorry, Rich. I'm very sorry. Guys, we're not talking spoilers yet. We're not talking yet. We're not doing it yet. Okay, almost there. We're almost there. That's fine. It's fine? Great. Yeah, if you just wanted to like, just turn all the game audio off just I in did. case there is anything. I did. Oh, great. Okay, ready? <clears throat> Spoilers for Star Wars starts now. Right now, we are talking about Star Wars spoilers. Yeah, let me make the chat bigger. Make the chat bigger. I'm going to close OBS and make the chat bigger, because that would be smart. Okay. Okay. I, you know, people who have watched the review know how you feel about it. Why don't you kind of summarize your feelings about Star Wars The Force Awakens? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Star Wars movie. Uh, what do you want me to say? Where do you, how do you? What does the chat want to know? I, uh, I don't, you know what? I liked it. Is I guess what I'm saying. I I, I watched it this morning, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed it. I'm I'm okay with it. Yeah. I'm not. I wasn't super hyped to begin with. Right. right. I I I I left the theater thinking that's about what I was expecting out of a Star Wars movie mm -hmm. made by someone other than George Lucas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess I could see that. There were, um, I, you know what? I guess we can start. What we can start chatting about is people are. You brought this up to me. I didn't even know about this. Yeah, yeah. Is Max Landis, a friend of of Red Letter Media? Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm gonna call him that because why not? Uh, apparently, uh, is upset at Star Wars because he called a Ray. He's he's upset at something specific. Yes. He. He made a, I don't know if he made a tweet or whatever it was, but he, he said that he thought that the character Ray mm -hmm. was kind of a Mary Sue. Okay. And, and it, what he's upset about specifically yeah. is that people were calling him sexist. When that's not true at all. The character is a Mary Sue. I, I did not know what a Mary when Sue I, was. When I first heard that, my gut reaction was, no, she's not a Mary Sue. No. Uh -huh. And I thought about it. Yeah. The man has a point. Okay. Explain <clears throat> to everyone what a Mary Sue is. A Mary Sue is is a a character that's just kind of perfect. Okay. I know originally it's it it it's it's like a author insert character. Okay. Like if I were to uh, write a Star Trek script and send it into Paramount, and my episode of Star Trek would introduce a new character, uh -huh. Ensign Evans, who is just really super smart, graduated yeah. top of his class, and he's good at everything he does on the ship. And all of the previously established characters, oh, they all just get along with him just fine, and they love him. <laughs> sure. That's a Mary Sue. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and and so the criticism is... Yes, Neil, Neil Breen Neil is a Mary Sue. <laughs> Neil Breen is his own Mary Sue. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, so the criticism is that Ray, the, the female lead of the movie, is... Good at everything she does, and everybody likes her all the time. Yeah. Which is pretty much true. Yes. Now, some of that, I, as we were talking earlier, some of that I think is really justified. Like, uh, for example, her being a good mechanic. That makes sense because she grew up collecting junk for a living. She she, she collects mechanical parts. She needs to know what's good, what what's valuable. She disassembles things. She works that, with machines a lot. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing that made sense to me uh, was she knows how to fight. Yes. To me, growing up as a young child on a hostile planet, if you're going to make it to that age, you probably know how to fight. Uh, yeah. So, like, to me, that made sense. There is one thing in the movie that makes no fucking sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, amazingly, suddenly... She can fly the Millennium Falcon with precision 
and balls. <laughs> now, this is a character. Yeah. Her whole character is she wants to stay on the planet because she thinks her family's going to come back for her. She's never left the planet. She's never wanted to leave the planet. Right. So when would she fly? How, when, did, did she know how to fly a spaceship before? Has she ever flown any spaceship before? So that makes sense. It doesn't kill the movie for me. No, it doesn't. But make if you're gonna sense. call her a Mary Sue, and yeah, that's that's yeah, that's a couple. That's a point. That's a good point. Yeah, it is. Like I, I don't. What are, know. what are her character flaws? Her character flaws? Yeah. <clears throat> Ooh. Okay. Like, 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 let's let's compare to Luke. Sure. What is what is Luke good at? And what is Luke? What was Luke not good at in the original movie? What was he not? Good Farm boy at? Luke. What was he? Was he was he especially gifted at anything? Well, he was. They said, and you know, you and I have different recollections have, of this. Yeah. I remember people saying that he was a really good pilot. I don't remember anybody ever saying that Luke was an exceptional, uber talented pilot. He could pilot. I was. He was a pilot. Chat. I think. I think. Now, Wait. Chad, I want the chat to confirm or deny yeah, this. Chad I'm going to say this first before we ask the chat, though. Of course. I think you're just getting confused with the bit where Obi Wan says that his father was a, the best pilot that he's sure. seen. Sure. And what I'm remembering, and Chad, help me out is someone later on when they're on a rebel base uh, is like vouching for Luke as a good pilot and says that he was, oh, he did this and this as a pilot. Mm -hmm. So I want to say like it, it was a one line reference to Luke being a good pilot somewhere on a rebel base somewhere. But someone. Someone saying best pilot in the Outer Rim Territories. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Someone okay. said that. <clears throat> Obi-Wan says that he heard Luke was a great pilot. I mean, you could argue that Luke isn't a perfect character because he's kind of reluctant to embrace his destiny, but you could say the same about Ray. I think, I, well, and see... I'm going to stay on the farm and have one more season because he's reluctant to, to Luke, get his ass in gear and do what he wants to do. Luke's biggest flaw as a character is his naivety, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Which, of course, is also the thing that gives him his optimism, right? Sure, sure. I would argue that Luke, like Ray, has no true flaw. At least comparing A New Hope to A yes. Force Awakens. And that it's true that Rey doesn't really have any flaws, but that is in theme with the Star Wars universe. Okay. And so it's like... Could, if you if you wrote her differently, could she have been a deeper character? Could you... Could, I don't know. Uh, I think, and I like, I, I like, think, I like the character before yeah. we go any further. Oh, sure. So I think she could have been a deeper character, but this is Star Wars deals in broad strokes and stock character traits. And so her just being so simple is in tow with the universe. Now, <laughs> you know, you, we, we can both agree that she is the protagonist, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I wonder if this series of movies isn't going to suffer from what I call the Kim Possible effect. The Kim Possible Are you effect. familiar with the cartoon show Kim Possible? I have heard of it. I've never seen it. I, I know of the Kim problem. Kim Possible is, it's like, it's like a James Bond, only it's a teenage girl. Mm. And she's a cheerleader, and she's super smart, and she's super athletic, and she kicks everyone's ass, and she has no flaws. Okay. She's perfect, and she does everything right and with little effort. Okay. Saves the day with little effort. Her sidekick mm -hmm. is a bumbling teenage boy who is sometimes afraid of things. Mm -hmm. he, he's kind of a fuck up. He's kind of a klutz. He's kind of dumb. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, from what, what Kim, Ep Kim Possible episodes I've seen, I end up rooting for him. I like him more than her because he's the <laughs> underdog. He's the I can Luigi. get behind. Oh, come on. You, you can do good, yeah. Ron. Stoppable. <laughs> and I feel that way about Finn. I find myself rooting for Finn more than Ray just because he's a schmuck. <laughs> when, when, when a schmuck stands up to power, yeah. like Finn did against uh, uh, Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren, yeah. How could you not root for that? Oh yeah, yeah. No, he was great. Like Finn, Finn's whole thing was great. Um, I I love that that was the start of the movie. But do you do you think it's possible that Finn could steal her thunder just by virtue of by virtue of her just being too perfect? Well, well, Finn, because he's the boob. But in the end, he 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 tries to fight against the evil. Right now, Finn has more personality. Finn is the Han Solo of this movie. He he has a personality, and his character arc happened soon on and so we're with him 
throughout the whole movie, whereas I think they're going to try to unfurl Ray throughout the trilogy. Mm -hmm. And so what's going to happen is it's the same as what happened in the first three, which is Han is the cool one, Luke is the protagonist. Finn will be the cool one, Ray will be the protagonist. Okay. Okay. Just that easy. Something, uh, but I, I, I love how they started the movie. I love him turning you know like us being there with him on his first mission and him seeing the horrors i love the visual reference of the blood on his helmet yeah that was so cool you know just a way to make him stand out as a storm Have we, visually i guess we've seen a little bit in new hope we don't see much blood in star wars usually the only blood i can remember in star wars is when obi-wan cuts off the arm of the A-Wan. yeah yeah that's the only I, blood. I guess that was more a lot more blood so yeah but it's just kind of weird I'm not used to seeing blood. No, there in Star is Wars. more blood in The Force Awakens, I think, than in A New Hope. Yeah? yeah. In general? Oh, yeah. That, there's a lot of blood in that severed arm. There was a lot of blood. But, I mean, there's blood on um, What's His Fuck, the pilot, when Kylo Ren was torturing him. There's yeah, okay. blood on the helmet. Okay. You know, I think there was more blood. Um, Gobbledygook says Was Finn a little too cool to be a stormtrooper? He, cool? w- he was raised by birth by a fascist space military to be a Marine. Maybe he should have been more cool like Ray. Why wasn't she the hip one? To be fair, I I, I, I I think that Finn was always the runt of the, the Stormtrooper litter. Right. Like he said, he was the janitor. <laughs> yes. I do, uh, thinking back on it, and, you know, you, tr- you we, we should try not to think about Star Wars too hard because it's supposed to be simple. Mm-hmm. But thinking back on it, Finn was wise cracking a little too soon out of the gate. How many wisecracks were there from Finn? He seemed jolly. He was a little too bumbly. <laughs> he almost, he almost, he was so bumbly. Oh, God. He almost doesn't seem like he belongs in the same universe that Ray belongs in. <laughs> he well, and see, being being on screen together, it's like they both want to push each other out of existence. <laughs> no, it's goofy. No, it's serious. No, it's goofy. No, it's serious. Oh, and see, I think they played well together. I think that's what, I, I, yeah. That's what Star Wars needs. It needs that levity to make sure people understand it's a fun adventure, and not serious. It's it's border it's borderline tonally inconsistent, but I still I did like their pairing on screen. Well, I, it could have been it, like with I think with a less talented director, mm-hmm. it could have flopped either okay. way. But I think. Abrams knows how to knows how to work with actors, and he he played them well against each other. Okay, I think tonally he's against his own character. Where like um like Gobbledygook said, this is a person who has been raised from birth or from whenever he was stolen as a child to be a stormtrooper, and he is like having fun from the get go and being boisterous and being like he like he almost seemed out of character as soon as he got in that Tie Fighter with uh, Poe. He's not having fun he's frightened for most of that until he, he actually hits something you know what i saw a lot of him is uh, a lot of spider-man i don't i don't see the excitement that you see though he spends most of it just scared and running well, well not not excitement i i guess like here let, be with me with spider-man for a second Spider, okay. the reason why spider-man wisecracks so much is it nervous energy right and that's what i saw in finn a lot is a lot of like pent-up nervous energy from this scary situation okay. that he's in and so that's like, but but it seemed weird that I, I don't like I, I I just saw it the once this morning, so I can't remember any specific wise cracking. But it's it, that's what his character seemed like to me, wise mm-hmm. cracking. Hmm. What? Oh, and you know what? I never saw Super Eight. I, you know, whatever. I, mean, I think Finn kind of steals the show because he's by virtue of being flawed, he is the more interesting character. He's got a he's got a real arc. Yeah, yeah, he does. And it's good. Ray's arc is just kind of generic, embracing her destiny. That's that's neat. It was neat. No, but she's the base. Yeah, she's the base. You build the story around. But he's he has Finn has a demon to slay in the mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. and that that was nice. It was nice. Wasn't it nice and simple? <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> wasn't it just like you just knew what was happening he's, all the time? He's got to stand up to the horrible people that raised him. Yes. It's, yeah. It's and he, he wants to run from it at first. It's, it's a good arc. <laughs> It is. It is. Um, can I talk? Can I talk a little artsy fartsy stuff that I loved? Go ahead. You want? Can you? Can you guess the artsy fartsy thing that I'm going to talk about? 
not off the top of my head. But. So, so what's the one thing they mentioned about the like the light side and the dark side? It's like needing the light, right? And of course, we have Ray. I the ray uh, of light. Mumbo jumbo mysticism. Mun- I probably I probably gloss over that. Mumbo mumbo jumbo mystic, and, and it's like I, you know, artsy fartsy stuff. You know what I like? What spaceships shooting at each other? That was pretty cool. That was pretty nice. They that, start to lose me whenever it's, and the spirituality of the force that flows through you. I did I like that that Tie Fighter scene. That first like them trying to steal the Tie Fighter. Wasn't that great? <laughs> yeah. And they got the like the cords. Oh god, the cords attached to it. Shooting, <laughs> shooting out the inside of the hangar. It's, it's great. That's great. It was so much fun. No, the the their their mega Death Star. What do they call it? The planet the Star Killer Base. The Star Killer if you want reference. Reference the, to thing. The Star Killer base is a weapon of the dark side, and where does it get its power from? The light. It gets its power. It has to steal the power from the sun. It has to steal the light to power the forces of darkness. Isn't that great? I think, Isn't that utter I, artsy fartsy bullshit? And I, I love it. I think I you're it. getting artsy fartsier than they intended. No, I that's definitely. You know? I mean, come on. It was it was it was so, definitely artsy fartsy with Kylo Ren mm. during the well spoilers so I guess it's all spoilers this all spoilers no because this, this is the big one yeah when when uh, Kylo Ren kills his father Han Solo yes right before, right right when they have that moment like just come back to us come back to us yeah and the sun's getting darker mm-hmm. in the distance yeah it's like in the life from the sun that was artsy fartsy it's the, that and but that the, the darkness one and then he stabs Han Solo literally that's that whole that whole scene is about like. I think that scene it was definitely intentional. But no, but that's that's all part of the thing is like that was their countdown of like bringing the you know not letting the lightness snuff out and like oh let's have our weapon steal the sun and it'll get darker throughout the scene. That's totally on purpose, artsy fartsy st- shit that I loved. I fuck I, you know like, and it's it's cheesy, but I don't know. It felt right. It felt right kind of cheesy. <laughs> yeah, no, by the way, this is why they don't invite me to many half in the bags cuz <laughs> cuz I talk about artsy farts and bullshit. Hmm. Um do you think Kylo Ren has a strong motivation for his actions? I think he has an interesting character and it's interesting pre- precisely because he's the anti Darth Vader. Yes. Darth Vader is powerful, evil and menacing mm-hmm. and when he's on camera it's just intimidating. Kylo Ren, his character is that he's the wannabe. <laughs> yes. He's not as intimidating as Darth Vader, but he desperately wants to live up to that. Yes. And people have said, why does he wear the mask? That's why he wears the mask. He wants to be like Grandpa. He wants to be intimidating. Yeah. Like Darth Vader, like his idol. Like Grandpa. Well, Mike had a point about Emperor Snoke. Okay. Like that's that in- intimidation is almost like a theme. Like he's got that giant holograph. It can't just be a normal size holograph. He's right. got the giant intimidation holograph. Po- posturing. And yes. The same thing is going on with Absolutely. Kylo Ren, where he's trying to be that that intimidating. Absolutely. But he's he's not really. But as a character, he's ultimately a failure at being what he wants to be. That's his that's his character. Oh sure, and like, as as a bad guy, I have no idea why he's a bad guy. But I also don't care because at the same time in uh, in A New Hope, I had no idea why Darth Vader was the bad guy. He's just the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of movie this is. Why is it, it all with all the information that you can glean from a new hope? Why is Darth Vader the bad guy? I'm I'm still sh- I'm sure they'll give you an explanation later in one of the other movies as to why he turned to the sure. dark side. Sure. But but what they're doing with this character and the wannabe Darth Vaderness of it, it's yeah. interesting. It's it, it's making for an interesting character. I d- yeah. More so than an interesting villain and that's fine. Sure. Because yeah. I'm I'm sure at the end of the day, by the time we get to the, all three of these movies, the real villain is going to end up being S- S- Snooky, Snooky, Snooky. You know what? Not, Snoopy. I, the lens flares were not overly aggressive. I'm I'm expecting uh, Kylo Ren to have a face turn earlier than Vader did. Oh yeah, you were talking about that. I'm earlier. I'm, I'm expecting to see the, the the team up with Ray earlier into the third movie. 
Yeah, like they have to they have to join forces, yeah. but not just like one scene join forces. I, that's what I'm predicting. I might be wrong. That's a, I think that's a fair prediction. Yeah, I also I I really liked him as an actor. Uh, he had a weird looking face, and I liked looking at it. It was interesting. Pitiful, but he's supposed to be pitiful, Mister Bibbs. Mister Bibbs says, "I don't think that makes Ren interesting. I think it makes him pitiful and comical, even uh, even when he's whining before killing his dad. He's he, he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be pitiful. He is not Darth Vader, and that's like that's literally where all of his aggression comes from. <laughs> his 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 bit in the next film was going to be him doubling down after getting humiliated and failing to live up to Darth Vader. Yeah, he's going to be twice the prick in the next one. <laughs> yes." And that makes him more like Darth Vader is a great villain. I I, I predict that the end of the second movie is is going to be him failing at that too. It's, <laughs> it's going to be when he starts like this evil thing sure. just did not work out sure. for me. So it'll be kind of like the ex- like a like the exact opposite of the original trilogy where you know Darth Luke Vader... was Luke was in shambles. Yeah, yeah it's going to be it'll be Kylo. Be, in shambles. I, that's what I think. Yeah, I could be, be nice. wrong. That'd be yeah. really nice. But but like if you can pass Kylo with with Darth Vader, Darth Vader is a great villain. He's intimidating. He's unstoppable. He's he's powerful in a way that you can't understand. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily a good character. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good villain. He's a good villain. Kylo Ren, not a great villain, <laughs> but a great like intri- Like there are facets to him. Darth Vader is a good character by way of being a good villain, but I don't think you need to be a great villain to be a good character. I. I... We're going to weird places. We're going, to weird places. We're going into semantics. Sema- but... You're going into character semantics. But um, I I never understood, and I still don't understand why. I'm just saying I don't know that I'd go as far as to say Darth Vader isn't a good character. He's a good character he, because he is, he's a good villain. He is not a he is not a complicated character. Okay, that's fine. That's fair. That's fair. So I guess we can all we can all agree on that. But Kylo Ren, why why is he evil? I, we'll, nobody, nobody knows. Nobody well, knows. maybe we'll find out. Maybe who knows? But like, he's still an interesting character. He's still an interesting character. There are hints at parental issues, and you know, they do you, here, use here's evil. Chad, here's an honest question. Yeah. Do you really think that Han Solo would be a good father? I was I was talking with Jack <laughs> earlier, where there's a there's a there's a great sitcom in mm. like post Return of the Jedi. Leia's kind of. <laughs> Leia's kind of in charge of the new government, and Han Solo's like the the, the first husband. Yeah, and he's just a, a fuck up. He's like, <laughs> he's like doing things with like the government money. Yeah. Hey Ben, hey Ben, hey Ben. I need I need to borrow your piggy bank for a second. I got a great deal. I got a great deal on some uh, on some slightly used blasters. I'll get you that money back in two weeks. I swear it, Ben. Like Han, where is the Galactic Social Security Fund? <laughs> Don't worry, Leia. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it all back. Make it all. Ba- I got. I got the greatest <laughs> swindle. We borrow this money. We get the dilithium crystals. We sell it to these guys at half price. Sell the other bit to this. Oh, it's going to be a great scam. <laughs> Mr. Shishmel thinks he tried, but ultimately failed as a father. Yeah, sure. That's yeah. what would. That's what would happen with Han Solo. Yes. Yes. And then you know they they got nervous and so they tried to send him away so other someone else could deal with it and I like I get it it just it doesn't his evilness just doesn't quite gel as a character but at the same time it doesn't really matter because it's a Star Wars movie remember that it's a Star Wars movie how how do you feel about him being named Ben well, whatever what do you want him named Shmoo Gadubu I mean they could have picked any random Star Wars name instead they chose something mm-hmm. that we're familiar with oh yeah I get that yeah it's fine and. I mean, Han didn't really wasn't that close to Ben, but you could you could argue that Leia was because she knew who Ben Kenobi was. She wanted to find him for the Death Star, so Leia yeah. may have may have had a deeper connection with Obi Wan. I, I I believe she did. That's how she knew like where to find yeah. him. Yeah, you know, it's, she, it's, she she trusted him with the rebellion's most vital secret. Yeah, and Ben played a giant role in. Getting Luke there, and Luke ultimately, you know, helped save the rebellion. Like, yeah, no, Ben would be a, a familial name. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I know people are that. upset that his people name is Ben. Why? I uh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. What would you prefer his real name to be? Like, it. 
if you know, like, because you know, he's called Kylo Ren, and then all of a sudden, like, like Han goes, Quincy. <laughs> or no, you gotta pick a weird Star Wars name. <laughs> oh sure. Oh Plato. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone goes. Did he just sneeze? If you call him Ben, it's got more emotional weight to it. I mean, no. Chewy. He <laughs> named him after Chewbacca. Chewy. Or no, who is the little one? It was Chewbacca. Lum- uh, Lumbaca. Lumbaca. <laughs> <laughs> or, or Itchy? Scratchy? Itchy. Yeah, that was the grandfather. Itchy. Itchy. They named itchy. him after Chewbacca's father. <laughs> itchy. itchy. <laughs> what, if, what, if, what if he was half Wookiee? And then we cut to Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> just wiping a tear away from his eyes. <laughs> we need a half wiki evil Jedi now, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Ben. I think Ben is really appropriate. Um, and you know, if you think about it, even in the movie, like Han has that moment when he's talking to um, to Ray in the Falcon. And he's like, I didn't believe it either. I thought it was a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but it's all real. Like he, like you can tell Han has changed. Like, and so meeting Ben was a big deal for Han. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? Like that's what started Han. At the time, I don't think Han gave a shit though. Oh no, not at the time. But like, think about him as a father, looking back on like how his life changed. I how don't... he met Leia. He would never met Leia without Ben. I gotta say, I don't think Han Solo would be sentimental about that. I'm. I'm... I could see <laughs> Leia being sentimental. <laughs> sure. And I'm sure she probably named him. Without without Ben, Han would have never met Leia. Han Solo would say, "Yeah, sure, name him whatever you want, baby cakes. <laughs> Where's your slave girl bikini?" <laughs> It's baby making time. Oh, I thought you were. I thought you were like adjusting to do a bit. Oh no, no, no I was just adjusting. <laughs> I say I just don't like the. I don't like the concept of of the Jedi's and the Force. I just don't. Mm-hmm. I, I, I hate the fact that these normal people, these heroic people, like people like Poe Dameron, who's an awesome yeah. character, and Finn, uh-huh. they need a Jedi to save them because they can't do it on their own. Now, I, I want to see the underdog regular human beings facing down these horrible force-wielding monsters as human beings. First of all, yes. Second of all, this is probably unintentional artsy-fartsy. This is me thinking about it too much. Mm-hmm. But doesn't that make you love Poe in this movie? Yes, it does. Okay, so Poe... I'm, I'm, I'm much more <laughs> suspenseful when normal people are yeah. facing down these powerful monsters. But, so... So Poe ex- escapes from the First Order, mm-hmm. right? Crash lands, and, and we follow uh, Finn on his mystical journey. But Poe also had to get back to the Rebellion somehow, and I'm sure had a great adventure. <laughs> right? But, but we only catch up with him over here, and he's, like, back with his unit and doing, like, Republic shit. And that almost makes me like it. Like, there's a parallel in the movies, right? Where the, the Jedi is not concerned... With like Republic matter, or this matter, like they're, they're they're these like mystical beings, right? Like remember the Emperor just like ah, oh, you little rebellion, I don't care yeah. about this stuff, right? Because they're mystical beings, but there's this world that's happening around them that Poe inhabits, and that's why I loved him in this movie where he's just off doing his own thing. Oh, I'm back with the Rebel fighters now. Great, let's go shoot some shit. Hey, I remember you. But they were off having their own adventures. Nice. Yeah, he's he's Poe's a great character. Poe's a great character. Yeah, I, I'm rooting for Poe, but he needs Jedi to save him. Because we need force. We need force. We can't do it on our own. Mm-hmm. We need. We need these gods. We need these gods to save us. We nah, can't do fine. it on our own. Nah, they would have done it on their own. Thematically, I think the Star Wars universe is just horrible. <laughs> yeah, possibly. We need our betters to save us. Now, oh bother! I don't think that's fair. Um, oh bother! Is is writing something in all caps and being very sarcastic, saying, "Poe, did you see me shoot that thing? Yeah, Finn, I saw you shoot that thing, and your name is Finn, best buddy." Hey, if somebody just saved my ass by defecting from his government, I'd be a bit, I'd be a running on adrenaline at that moment. That man is my that best That man friend. is my best friend right now because he stopped me from being tortured by a monster who can choke you from across the room. And steal my thoughts from and my And steal your head. thoughts from your brain. And then, and then this guy saves you and then is also shooting his friends while you're flying and a ship and helping you escape. He's risking his life. Fuck, fuck. Fuck yeah, you are my best fucking friend. We are hanging out every day that you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine. 
But we are hanging out every day. You're at least going to buy him a cup of coffee afterwards. You're going to buy him dinner. And he's super fucking excited about it. <laughs> Absolutely. All the time. Yes. And you know what? You see him later, at, like, also helping you out, like, fighting the bad guys and you bombing a city. You're still fighting the bad guys, Finn? Fuck yeah. High five, chest bump, bro fist, all the way. All the way. <laughs> Leia is the only one who actually does useful things. Yes. Yes, by the way. Han went back to his life of lowly smuggling. Leia continued her role as a general. And then, and then, and then, and then it just, it's a little, it was a little bit off-putting for me that it just both Han and Leia, they're doing the same exact shit they were doing in 40 years. I know they excused it in the movie. We went back to doing what we know, but hmm. come on. Yeah, yeah. There's little, okay. Uh, <laughs> these characters have not really changed at all. Okay, okay. Yeah. But it was weird. Maybe that's why they've failed so much. Cause they haven't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> There's something else we could talk about. I forgot what it was. Uh, oh, you know. I was going to talk about, I was, we were talking about Poe and just what, what's what's going to happen in the future. Um, mm -hmm. I was just wondering, what, what the hell are they going, like the second one, right? Obviously, Ray's on her little Jedi journey. Ray's got to go on her Jedi journey. What do they? What do they do with Finn? I got a feeling we're going to see more of Poe because Finn has nobody to talk to. It's going to have to be Poe. They're going to have to go on some kind of adventure. <gasps> Wouldn't it be great if Finn and Poe went on like a buddy cop adventure? I, I I half expect that to happen. Well, okay, so we can we can expect these to be slight copies of the original trilogies. Mm -hmm. Based based off of this one, this one is a pretty good copy of A New Hope, right? Yeah. And so in Empire, what do we have? We have we have Luke splitting off doing his Jedi thing, mm -hmm. and, and then we Han, have and Han and Leia are off doing their own thing in space. Off doing their own. So that's exactly what's going to happen. Poe and Finn are going to be off doing. Their They're going to be on the, the mission to do this or that. They're on. A, they're on a. Well, what was what was their mission? What was Han and Leia's mission? To escape. It failed. Oh, that's right. They're escaping <laughs> Hoth <laughs> without a hyperdrive. That's right. That was the complication. I, f I forgot. Like I was like, why were they even in the asteroid field? Because they were escaping Hoth. Oh, Lord. You forget. You forget these things. Finn and Poe are clearly the new Han and Chewie. Well, Chewie's still there. Oh, no. I guess Chewie's going with Rey. Oh, no. He doesn't have to. Well, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. He's got the Millennium Falcon. He's got the Millennium And no more life debt. <laughs> that might not even be canon in this, though. Oh, yeah? They, they, they nuke the EU. Oh, okay. Oh, good. So... Huh, well, Chewie, Chewie might not be a slave anymore. Yeah, I think che yeah, Chewie's gonna go back to to Lumpy and start being a real dad for once. You suppose you suppose Han left him the Falcon in his will. Are we gonna see a Han funeral scene opening like I'm early actually, on in the next one? I'm really surprised we didn't see one. They they're really happy. They're really they're usually all ab ab about their like people in fire funeral scenes. Well, he kind of blew up. Oh, that's true. He, <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was on an exploding planet. By the way, he's super blewed up. Like <laughs> he went into the melting pot, and then the melting pot blew up. Like he double blewed up. Uh, <laughs> no, probably not. Then, if if there's no body to bury, yeah. As also as 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 lame as the idea of a new Death Star is, yeah. Isn't it kind of dumb just to blow it up right away? Don't you? If you're going to reintroduce this concept, don't you at least want to keep it around as a threat that's looming over the trilogy? So when they finally yeah. blow it up, it's oh yeah. I mean, what are they going to do? Build an other other Death Star for the final movie? It's even bigger. Where does the Empire plot go from here? Can it's the it's it's Star Killer gas giants. Can we talk about it? Just blows up galaxies. How lame that thing was from the very it's, beginning it's lame but if you're gonna have it yeah. keep it around so there's something big to blow up in the climax of the trilogy oh no they blew up five random planets once right mm -hmm. and then we don't see it again until the final attack and i don't i don't think jj abrams understands how far apart planets are <laughs> no no it just doesn't that do you remember doesn't do you remember in star trek 2009 when matter. when they dropped Spock off on the nearby planet so we could watch the destruction of Vulcan, and Vulcan's like giant in the sky. Yeah. Planets are very, very far apart. Very far apart. Very far. Th that does not matter in a Star Wars movie, and you know that. that 
<laughs> no, you know, I just that the the oh god, I keep forgetting what's called the Terror Planet. Mm-hmm. The Terror Planet. Star Killer Base. The Star Killer Base. Luke Skywalker's original name. Luke Starkiller. It was going to be Starkiller. That's right. It's a reference. Oh, well, that's fine. It's I, Technically, it's a Starkiller. It makes sense. That was the most neutered MacGuffin I think I've seen in recent movies. Where we barely see it. We barely... We don't, we don't have any connection to its destruction, right? Like, with mm-hmm. the Death Star, Leia is looking over her home planet. Oh, my God, it's her home planet. The planet gets destroyed. That's a huge deal. The year they kill a planet, it's like, oh, we see people for two seconds and they die. Who cares? Who, who are these people? Maybe they're all rapists. I don't know. Maybe he killed race, rapist planet. They could have done something else. They could have done anything else. Anything else. Anything else. But if they were going to, keep it around because it's supposed then, to... Then, then, like, the what the new the new empire the the, the reborn, first order the first order at least there's like a, like a, a running plot structure that for would be them. great well and by the way that would give them time to establish like why this thing is so awful also what the fuck is the political structure <laughs> there's 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 a there's a, a republic they mention a republic yeah they blow up coruscant or not coruscant or coruscant replacement or whatever the fuck it is so there's clearly a a republic government right but there's also a resistance and an empire wait there's a resistance that's what they keep calling the the, the new rebels are called the resistance the, the whole movie are the they? resistance yes oh i think what are I they a resistance from the res- why aren't they just the Republic Army? Wouldn't wouldn't the New Order technically be the Resistance at this yeah, point? It, it makes no sense. Didn't they? Well, they they mentioned like calling in the Republic Army, right? No, I don't think they do. I, I want to, I, but I guess here's the real thing. So, like talking about this, like political structure, what people are called. Technically speaking, going off of the original trilogy, that stuff doesn't matter, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if, if we look at A New Hope, they talk about, like, it's it has finally happened. We have dissolved the Imperial Senate. And that's the only mention of, like, power structure. Yeah. So so none of this well, really matters. Uh, as Mike pointed out in the Plinket view, yeah. you get everything you need to know from that open shot. Big big ship from the Empire right. in charge of things. Little rebellion. Yep. We, we know what the structure of the galaxy is. Empire exactly. in control of everything. Yep. Good guy rebellion fighting against it. Yep. Now, I don't really... I know there's different factions. I don't know how they relate to each other. Well, how much how much power does this empire have? We, how much power does the Republic have? If we're going to go off of why that... Why is the resistance... Where is, is the resistance just, like, in the empire territory? So that's why they're not affiliated? I don't know. Maybe. Does the Republic not have an army? No, and if they, they don't, are they stupid? They mention, they they specifically mention calling in the Republic Army. So I believe the Resistance is a wing of that. But also, if you're going off of that, there is that shot. There's, see, there's, there's nothing the, inherently wrong with space politics. It's just right. the prequels handled it all very poorly, and it didn't make any sense in the prequels. That yeah. doesn't mean you have to avoid talking about the political structure entirely, I don't think. Enough, enough, you need to talk enough so that I know what's going on would be nice. Maybe. I don't know. You know, again, like, if, if you go back to the original, you got your good guys and you got your bad guys. That's mm-hmm. all that really matters. And if you're going to go off of the Plinkett review and, like, that original shot, we get a very similar and wonderful cinematic shot of the First Republic engulfing a planet. Mm-hmm. The black ship engulfing the white planet. It's the shadow hovering over things, yeah. Exactly. And so, it's like, you get it again, where it's like, it, it is the darkness. Oh, my God. It's the darkness covering the lightness. That's the all artsy-fartsy right. fartsy schmuck. It's artsy-fartsy bullshit, and I love it. That doesn't explain what the resistance is or, or what the Republic Why is. do you need to know? Why does it matter? Because it's... Because I'm confused. Because I'm confused when watching it's, it. it. It's adding... It's adding another cog, and I'll, I'll agree with you. It's adding another, like, the resistance isn't quite... You don't need to go into detail. You just need to give me enough to understand what the universe is like. That's okay. all you need. That's all I need. All right. It's you need, like you you need one line of dialogue that says, uh-huh. the Republic's been losing systems to this new order. 
That, that oh okay so they're they're rising and then there's the resistance that is probably in the old territories that would be that would be like one line like that would have been enough sure sure yeah we're losing systems to that new order every day we lose more systems yep oh okay the resistance is probably among those systems oh oh, okay. oh. <laughs> but whatever <laughs> yeah because it rhymes right but, well it, it is it, they all will be they will be very similar in structure to the original movies. And that, that's what we know for sure now. This was, A Force Awakens was very similar to A New Hope. Mm -hmm. Structure. Except for longer. <laughs> much, much, much longer. It didn't feel long to me. I did have to take a bathroom break in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I was smart enough to have to drink a ton beforehand. I, I, I saw a morning showing... Uh, Jay, Jay, and I had a coffee. Jay missed the Jedi mind trick scene. Oh, did he? He had to go to the bathroom. He missed the Daniel Craig cameo. That was Daniel Craig. Really? Oh, fun. Yeah. That's fun. I, I really like this. And, you know, like a lot of people, I when when you were describing when you were describing the whole, like, her being, like, really good at things, mm -hmm. the ray, I, I always forget her name, ray. She's a ray of sunshine. She's a ray of light, a ray of hope in the world. Um, Somebody stop him. No, never. I loved her figuring out how to do that Medi Jedi mind trick. I love that scene. Luke wasn't much different. Luke wasn't much different. What was his training? He had, he had like two hours on the Millennium Falcon with, with Obi-Wan. With the little shooter thing. And then he had like, what, a day or two with Yoda? I, I, think, he was with, I think he was supposed to be with Yoda a, a, all that long. A, a week? Maybe a week. Maybe a week. He had a week? Maybe, maybe a week with Yoda. But I mean, that's that's. And that's all the hours. training. That's all the official training Luke ever had because everyone was fucking do dead after that. Yeah. Unless Force Ghost Yoda came and, and taught Yoda, Luke for years he, afterwards. He, he, you know, like told him some stuff. <laughs> hey, hey, Luke. Did you did you know Luke? Instant Jedi, just add water. Right. The thing, the thing, uh, like you know, you brought up like she learned force stuff really quickly, and mm -hmm. that's that's where a lot of it, what what is it called again? Which her character being good at everything? Oh, Mary Sue. Mary Sue, her being a Mary Sue. I don't know if that if it ne necessarily counts with her being good at the force all the time because every time she like learned something from the force, it seemed to be reactionary to Kylo Ren. Mr. Scheismelt, do you know that? Or is that just speculation on your part that's not explained? Or was it explained in a comic book or, <laughs> or, or some sort of other thing? I mean, you can think that. It might be right, but... It could be. When I you're mean, watching that... the movie and you're speculating and you don't really know... Uh, if different. it doesn't say it in the movie, it's not, it's not yeah. official. But... Or at least strongly implied would be nice. Right. You don't have to be a nerd to care why a fleet of X-Wing shows up. You need to know why. Well, no, we know why, because someone called, that lady called the Resistance, and then the fleet of X-Wing shows up. Oh, bother. If you're bothered by the bread scene, I think that's nitpicking. Come on. It is It is space. There is some science fiction elements to the, the universe. He's, he doesn't like the, the instant bread scene. Oh, that was cute. It was cute. He's got a little bread thing. Oh, it's instant bread. It's great. Then, then you know what she's collecting is food. She's 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 doing what she does so she can eat. Yeah, that was a that was really cute. Oh, bo oh bother. You you be nice. <laughs> but in any case, I I think her learning of the force was uh, appropriate. Yes, you know, I'm, I know you don't care about stuff like that, but I I think her learning of the force was appropriate it's, because it it's was fine, it's fine. It was defensive. It would be nice if she had some kind of mentor. Well, that's what that's what she's because Han Solo kind of was that role. He was the mentor. Uh, he's a poor mentor. <laughs> he's a good character, but he's a poor mentor. Yeah, yeah. And here's here's the thing. I I it's movie logic, so I get it. Yeah. But it it bugged me that everybody was super best friends by the end of the movie. Like everyone's crying when Han Solo died. He's a scummy smuggler they just met. No, they yeah. just met Han Solo. Yeah, it's sad when he dies, but it's sad for us because we know who he is because we saw the old movies, like Ray and Finn. Oh, that guy, that guy we just met is dead. Oh, we better keep moving. That that would have been the honest reaction. Oh, that sucks. Let's get out of here. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Finn, I just met you. 
Like, I understand why Finn's so attached to Ray. It's the first woman he's ever seen. <laughs> that, that well, ma- Captain Phasma. We've never seen her. <laughs> they, they can speculate what's under there, but they don't know. That could just be, uh, you know. Would he still be willing, willing to risk his life for the first woman he ever met? It, you know, like it works. As, it works in movie logic. How you? Uh, how old? How old is he in the movie? Give me an estimate. I know twenty something. Sure. You uh, you you spent the first twenty years of your life surrounded I, by men. I think it's a stretch to say that he's never seen a woman before. I think that's a stretch. He spent his life scrubbing toilets on a moon gun. Yeah, he he's he had. A, I'm not gonna deny he had a very unhappy life. What? It's probably the first friend, he, real friend, he ever came close to having. He said but... he was the first person who, the first person who was nice to him. But I'm saying, like, and you know, when you're on the moon gun base, everyone has to wear their stormtrooper outfits. Remember, he got yelled at when he took off his stormtrooper outfit. He's never seen another human person. Mm-hmm. He's a pretty lady, and that pretty lady's nice to him. She's my best friend forever. I love her. <laughs> I want to be next to her all the time. <laughs> Oh, is that true? Phasma is uh, Breen from Game of Thrones? Oh, that's great. Uh, then I hope she's great. Whatever. It was a non-character. Uh, by the way... For- As someone who didn't follow the spoilers, like yeah. I didn't really... Whatever, it was just, it's happening. Yeah, I know it's going to happen. I'll see it when it's in the theater. I, I wasn't hyped about that character. I just saw one of like a promotional image or two. Okay. Uh- that's the thing I'm gonna see. But by the way, so it didn't bother me based, when she didn't have a big part. Based off of the promotional images and like all the toys of her, yeah, and like she said one thing, like this she is, she had nothing to do with the movie. Same thing with Boba Fett. It, yeah. Exact same thing with Boba Fett. You know, I guess you're true. You're true. You're true. You're right. Oh bother! Oh bother! Would like to tip us two dollars to make sure we know that we are absolutely terrible at detecting sarcasm. Oh, bother. You have to do the kappa. It's text. It's text. It's fucking text. And you, and oh, bother. You know how crazy Star Wars people are. You know. You They're crazy. I don't think you understand the kind of crazy shit we read all the time. <laughs> have you have you heard of Jim Rayner? I think that's the guy who wrote the, the rebuttal. Oh. <laughs> There's some crazy out there, oh, bother. And... There and we, they, thank you. See that face? That's Kappa. That's Kappa, and that's the face you need when when you post sarcastic stuff. So we know. And there's Christmas Kappa too. I I I have a theory. If you took that that Jim Rayner, yeah, and you gave him a brain scan, mm-hmm. would it look identical to like a brain scan of like a fundamental Christian talking about God? Would it be? Would would there be no difference? Would you be able to tell them apart? Jim Rayner talking about Star Wars and the fundamentalist Christian talking about how, yes, the Earth is only 5,000 years old. Yes, Han Solo, he, he, he shot second because that's what George Lucas said. <laughs> uh, dinosaurs were on the Ark. <laughs> and dinosaurs were on the Ark, but they got kicked off because <laughs> they ate the unicorns. And that's why we don't have dinosaurs or unicorns. Um, the stormtrooper who freed Ray when she's yeah oh yeah we we mentioned that that's I thought that was neat I did I didn't know that but I think that was cool and what a great scene I just I love that he will release me <laughs> and open that and leave that door open what <laughs> like I like you know it took her it, it you know that that was a. a that was very uh, akin to like you know starting the the motor on your car, and it doesn't start that first time. It was great. I thought that was a neat scene. I really liked the movie. I'm gonna go see it again. I'm gonna go see it again without children. Hold on. The opening crawl said, the "First Order is risen from the ashes. The Empire will not rest until Skywalker, unless Jedi has been destroyed. Mm-hmm. With the support of the Republic, General Leia leaves a brave resistance." Oh. Okay. Why does the Republic need to support a resistance? Why doesn't the Republic use the Republic army? Why do they need a resistance? Doesn't, that doesn't matter. Okay. That doesn't matter. Okay. It says it in the text. Thank you. Um, thank you, Frosted Ambassador. That's what That's what the... Uh, okay. I think that, that does a pretty good job. Yeah. Yeah. That does a pretty good job. You know, so they're connected. The... Re- I don't. Yeah, it's it's weird that they have two names. It, 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 it still doesn't make much sense to me. I think you know. Where's the Where's the Republic Army? The, I want to know where the Republic Army here's is. Here's the Here's the real reason why mm-hmm. they're called the Resistance, is because they were called the Rebels in the other. Yeah, movies. yeah. 
right? I, whatever. Oh, no, no. I'm not saying that's that makes it OK. I'm just saying, like, that's what they were doing. Like, oh, yeah, because you know what? If we call them the Republic Army, people be confused. Wait, are they the stormtroopers now? That was the Republic Army. Um, good Jack, some crime. No, my children were great. My, I, I have, I have groomed my children to be quiet and respectful moviegoers, and they really like it. You know why? Because they get a big bucket of popcorn too, so they just don't talk. Their face is full of popcorn. <laughs> my children are very respectful in a movie theater. Um, but you know, like. If, if anyone is a parent out there and you are in a movie theater with your kid, part of your brain is, you know, like on them, like in case they need something, in case like they're talking, in case, like in case they do anything, part of your brain needs to be there. So I'd like to see the movie one time without having to worry about the children's. Mr. Shy Smile, that is not true at all. Mr. Shy Smile says, I think 3PO's red arm is a Metal Gear Solid 5 nod because JJ and Kojima are quiet, are quite friendly. No. I don't think I'm so. I'm going to assume sarcastic. The, there is no kappa. Um. <laughs> what happens with Luke and, and Ray now? Um, she, he trains her. He trains her and we... By the end of the movie, we find out that he's her father. That's going to happen. You think it'll be that yeah, obvious? Yeah, I, I think so. That obvious? Yes. Yeah. All right. I I mean I I wouldn't deny. Yes, it, yes. I think it's going to be that obvious. Yes. All right. Hey guys, uh, this is from Jedi fan for, Jedi fan four twenty one. Hey guys, can I say that Kylo Ren is basically how Anakin should have been handled in the prequels? Also, Episode seven really brought back the fun of Star Wars. Sure, you can say that. That's and, fair. and Jedi fan, I, I agree with you that it really brought back the fun of Star Wars. I thought it was a great action movie. Like a great little yes. action movie in space. There was some fun stuff in there. There was some fun stuff in space. How they should have handled Anakin? I, I think... Le less fun Guardians of the Galaxy with yeah. a better climax and better characters. I think that's great. I think, like, by the way, yeah. that, that's a really great way to put yeah. it. Guardians was more fun. Characters in Star Wars were better. Yeah. Easy peasy. Um, the climax wasn't near as lame. Oh yeah, the cl the climax of we got a rock. Star we'll hold the rock, everybody. We we'll hold the rock. No, well, no, we're let's, gonna hold the rocks and hold hands. Let's let's crash into the ship, and that's our plan. <laughs> our plan is to crash into the ship, and we're gonna shoot things. That's the clever plan we came up with. Now let's hold this rock and hold hands, and the power of friendship <laughs> will save the day. You ruined that movie. <laughs> uh, I, you know, like. That's the hard part. Is like how Anakin should have been dealt with, right? I don't know. I I think this is a. I think the the good thing about Kylo Ren is he's a different character. He has his own issues to deal with. I don't know. I I can't. I guess I can't speak to that. I'm sorry, but I agree that it was a very fun movie. Saint Millions. Go Saint Millions says we thought Finn was going to be the Jedi, but they bait and switched us. I don't think Rey is Luke's daughter. Was it really a bait and switch? Am I? It can't be me and Mike weren't the only ones to to say like almost instantly. Oh no, that's it's gonna be the girl. It's totally gonna be the girl who is the Jedi. Of course. So okay. So they they so it wasn't like a bait and switch. It was just obvious to anyone who thought about it, right? I think so. I I I figured it out. Like and of course like just watching the trailers and Finn's reaction, I knew immediately that he he's a reformed stormtrooper. I knew that before watching the movie, absolutely. Oh, Finn, Finn is going to be a reformed stormtrooper. Boom. You see him in the stormtrooper outfit. You see him giving weird looks to the rebel people in the I, trailers. I, I did think he was going to be a rebel secret agent. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no. no. I thought he was going to be like some kind of covert thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I I knew immediately. Because they have that, he has that looks with them in the on the airfield. Which is fine, because I like what they did with Finn in the movie, so oh, well, yeah. no complaints. It's, it's, a good, it's a good movie. I... I'm it's a fine movie. With with my mediocre expectations being exceeded, I feel really happy about. Look, the greatest failure of the prequels was just garbage, emotional, emotionless characters that you don't care about. Yeah. Either emotionless or childish. Now we have good characters. Yeah. That you can you can do something with, and you don't you're not, you're not gonna mind seeing them again. Yeah. Like everyone who thought like oh, the attack of clones, it could be better. 
I'm like, well, no, because we know the characters we have now and the terrible characters. You can't, you can't do anything with that. <laughs> That's what we're stuck with. We have a shit base. And regardless of the fact that I don't love this movie, mm. there's stuff you can work with to make a fun, better sequel. Oh, yeah. yeah. So... Mm, blueberry, I don't know. Blue, uh, blueberry. Oh, wait. First, first of all, Pizza Train. Um, how do you think Rain Johnson handles episode eight? And who's Rain Johnson? What did he do? I don't know. I don't I know. know. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I'm terrible with names. I have no idea. Here's, here's the thing, though. Here's the really, really important thing. Is um, Disney is in charge of Star Wars. You know what the important thing is? What? How will the new Star Trek show work out? Is it going to be schlock, or is it going to be, like, genuine Star Trek? Disney... That's what's important. Well, I mean, what's important is other things, like I need eggs. But Disney is in charge of Star Trek. Directors, they're going to come and go. Disney is in charge. Uh, But Blueberry brings up an interesting point that I'd like to talk about. Did you guys talk about how odd it was for them to tell us who Kylo Ren was instead of saving it for the confrontation between him and Han Solo? No, because then then people would be bitching about the, the lame reveal like empire had i would have rolled my eyes yeah yeah it would have been bad had, had they revealed that only at the end it's like oh god no no no. like make that not a secret make that just part of his character it would have been like the most predictable secret ever too yeah mm-hmm. everyone would have rolled their eyes no no that's just part of his character and it's okay that we know that. oh that's the reveal oh just like empire yep. they, they couldn't do that no and, and and they were right. I, I think they did it right. They let, did it right. Un, let let us discover that with yeah yeah no that's good that's good. Um, you know I, I know one thing you wanted to mention before we wrap it up because mm-hmm. it is I think we've been talking about Star Wars for an hour. Uh, is is the abundance of CGI characters? The you have, you have some beautiful practical effects. Yep. And some horrible CGI. Some horrible CGI. Like the CGI spaceship stuff. That no, that was all fine. Of course. But I like that character. I'm gonna call her Mog Mothma. I know it's not her name. Like like the oh. Broken Age character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Broken Age thing. Yeah, yeah. Mog something. Mog Mothma. I, yeah. I liked her character well enough, but she's just some horribly distracting CGI. The, the CGI lady with the just weird... use a person. You, you could use a, a person. person. It's okay to use little people. It's, you know. And the the Cthulhu monsters in Han Solo's ship. As fun as that bit was. Yes. The monsters looked awful. They looked terrible. They looked horribly out of place as compared to everything else. Yeah. Dude, you guys are part of an outfit that made hours of videos boiling down. The prequels aren't Star Wars I grew up. Of course you can copy the originals. What? What? Mr. Bibbs, I'm sorry. I think I joined that conversation too late. But... Anyway, uh, the the CGI... Our, if you think our problem was that the prequels weren't the Star Wars we grew up with, I don't think you really watched those videos. We talk about how the characters are awful, not how the characters aren't like the characters we knew necessarily, just that they're bad characters. The, the, the bad, poorly written characters and the pacing of the movie and the story structure of the, the movie. The sitting on the couch, uh, every, everything. The, the boring shots, the... They're, they're... The shallow lightsaber fights that are just video game fights. Oh, you know what? Speaking of that, I really like that end lightsaber fight. Everybody had a character thing going on in that fight. Everybody had a thing. For Finn, it was just standing up to the horrible regime that, yeah. that oppressed him his whole life. For mm-hmm. for Rey, it was embracing her destiny. And for, for Kylo Ren, it was dealing with his Darth Vader insecurities. Right? The woman who humiliated him. It was personal. Wasn't it? Well, and just like the, the actual, the physical fight itself where it's like, where Finn... <clears throat> Has been trained as a soldier, so he'll know how to he'll know how to swing a sword, mm-hmm. you know. And so the fight was a little, and you know, a, a ray of Kylo. he does get his ass kicked, and oh sure. But the fact is, he was standing up to the the power that oppressed exactly. him. That and, was a great moment. And like Ray doesn't know how to use that sword, and so most of her fighting technique was literally like. <laughs> <laughs> People are are bitching that she handled herself well in that fight. To be fair. He Kylo Ren was in the scene previous shot in the stomach oh, by yeah. a Wookiee bowcaster, and he yeah. They made a point that he was horribly injured. They oh they showed the blood dripping from him, and really she like there 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 were moments where I think he was trying to toy with her. He was trying to do the dark Va- Darth Vader thing mm-hmm. until her fo- her force got awakened, and then she could handle herself. 
it was it was satisfying because yes. of the characters, and they didn't need to flip around and jump over lava pits. <gasps> Mr. Bibbs, you're so incorrect. Mr. Bibbs, I don't see a cop in there. Mr. Bibbs says, yes, I did watch the Star Wars reviews. They boiled down to, I didn't grow up with these Star Wars. <sighs> Mr. Bibbs, you're horribly incorrect. The, they take time to point out a series of technical flaws in the movies that explain why we don't like them. Technical flaws that The Force Awakened does not have. The Force Awakens has has different problems. Like it's it's a light movie. It's I still think it's very good because for, for and for the record, it does copy Episode Four a bit much for my taste. Yes. I don't I don't love the movie. Oh no, you don't. I I like it. I like it a lot. I think I like it more than Rich does. But but uh, duh, 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 duh. but Mr. Bibbs, I you know. I we I guess we'll just have to disagree. There's no technical and thematic flaws. Thank you, King Lago, King Lama. Do you think Harrison Ford was relieved to have been killed? Off? I no, think no. he's been waiting for this for thirty years. That was a contractual obligation on his part. Not relieved. He needed to be. He like no. This is it. No, he wanted he wanted to die in Jedi. Oh, did he? Yeah. I don't remember. He that. he's been saying that not just recently. He's been saying that for years. Yeah, they should have killed me off. They should have killed me off. Lawrence Kasdan wanted to kill him off, and now that Lawrence Kasdan is writing a movie that Han Solo agreed to be in, of course they finally killed Han Solo <laughs> off. That was the least. That was that was just so unshocking. Sure. Yeah. No. Would I say it's better than Jedi? It's different. You you can't. It's. Better than parts of Jedi, but mm -hmm. parts of Jedi are also better than it. A Jedi, if you could separate, like the Jabba's Palace stuff is great, the mm -hmm. Throne Room stuff is great. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take most things in The Force Awakens over, like the Endor stuff. Well, and it, it, they're also like they're very different feels. The movie, like you know, the, movies can handle action a lot better on a sci-fi level now. So the action in The Force Awakens is much better, and I like action movies. The action's much better. The, the all the flying stuff is amazing. I think I think Jedi is an odd movie in that parts of it, parts of it mm. work very well, yeah. and then other parts of it are just miserable failures. <laughs> I I think I can agree with that, but it's you can't you can't really compare movies thirty years apart. I think. Eh. Oh my God. How do you feel about excessive coincidence? Because that's a, that's a pet peeve of mine. Like the ship they get in, oh, it's the Falcon! <laughs> just, they happen to get in the Falcon! Oh, and they get in the Falcon five minutes later, oh, they just happen to run into Han Solo! And they go to a planet to, mm. to get the, the map to the Rebellion. Oh, that planet just happens to have Luke's lightsaber! <laughs> that stuff annoys the shit out of me. You know... It's my personal storytelling pet peeve, and I can't fucking stand it. And Star Wars, destiny, fate! A fucking lazy excuse. To... To me, it all depends on how closely related to reality the movie is. Mm -hmm. Star Wars doesn't give a fuck about reality. Like they, fate and destiny and are writers' tools. Like that's the only thing they are. They don't exist in real life. It's an excuse. It's an excuse. It's an excuse. And as long as it's a fantasy movie, go f f go for it. Fucking yeah, that's your destiny. Great. Oh, you, you you ran into Han Solo because that was your destiny. I don't care. I know. I don't care. As as long as they don't stick on it too much and blow some shit up in the meantime, I'm fine with it. Dick Neutral. Wasn't it neat that they brought genuine humor and scrappiness back into Star Wars? But do you remember when R2 was flying around in his jet boots and things were slipping around in oil? <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember when Jar Jar slipped in the poopy? <laughs> <laughs> well, the humor never left. <laughs> no, I. Th this is something Rich and I were talking about earlier with the with the Finn and Ray back and forth. Finn is is a is a is a scrappy, goofy, not a goofy character, but you know he he's got his quips. He's got his things. He makes the jokes, and I liked him. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of anything specific, and nothing is popping out at me. But, uh, you know, like, I mean, but it's all like small character stuff. Like, 
just like uh, Finn and BB-8, like Finn trying to convince a droid that the droid needs to lie for him. That was, a, that was really just, funny. It was cute. It was cute. And the you, thumbs up was cute. And you get the little <laughs> fire thumbs up. Adorable. And I, I think this is one of those things that the movie needs to make sure that it doesn't get too heavy. It needs to be a light movie, action, light. Go, going back to the our, our predictions video that okay. Mike did. Oh, you know what? I never actually saw that because I he, wanted, I didn't want to ruin anything. I don't know how the hell he called BB-8. We're talking about R2-D2 and BB-8. Okay. And I said, well, who's going to be the comic relief? Or what's, what's BB-8 going to be? Like? He said it was going to be a blend of both. He's going to be both the, the comic relief and the competent R2-D2 character. And Mike oh. was Mike was totally right about that. I don't know if that got edited out of the actual video that went up, but Mike Mike totally nailed the character of BB-8. <laughs> yes. Like, to a T. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose. Also, like, the whole, like, R2-D2 thing I don't understand. Like, R2 being gone and now he's back or whatever like but yeah, you know it doesn't matter it's just i don't understand i was it. i was waiting for there to be a, like a logical reason yeah like like luke programmed him to go into sleep until such and such happened or like like ray touches him and <sighs> like the her force power wakes him. no he's just like oh, i'm awake now <laughs> i'm awake now i'm r2d2 i'm awake now fuck you um Right, like that. Oh, that's a great one, Mr. Shadowsmile. Like when Ray's trying to fix the Millennium Falcon and keeps pointing at different tools and finishes like I'm ah, picking up pieces of duct tape. It's, it's, it's small little things. It's great. Mr. Glitch thinks R2 was the same blend. I thought R2 was just much more on the whole competent. Was R2 ever like goofy? R2 always knew what to do and was brave. R2 was the brave one. You can one. see it as goofy because he's a little droid, but... Well, it's like, he was the brave one. The goofiness was just his noises, right? His noises are goofy. I don't remember them playing R2 for comedy. Like, like in the same way that three C-3PO was the comic relief. Was R2-D2 ever blatantly comic relief? No. No, R2 was not blatant comic relief. I think the co I think much like Chewbacca or any droid where they beep and someone talks back to them, that's comedy. Yeah. That's lightheartedness, and I think that worked uh, to R2. Like, so he had comedic moments, but no, he wasn't the comic relief. Okay. I'll be with you there. Uh, BB-8. BB-8 was only com – like, BB-8 never fell down in the poopy, but his big comic relief moments was just in people understanding what his beeps meant. Google it. His names are scrolling fast. I'm having trouble reading them. E oh, electrocuting Ewoks, Mr. Gl yeah, he's got that going for him. But that's Jedi, and that's murky territory. That's less him being silly and much get the fuck away from me, you Ewok. You filthy Ewok. He did what we all wanted to do <laughs> to those Ewoks. <laughs> fry them. Just fry them into some Ewok meat. When R2 tried to steal back the ration from Yoda. Okay. Mild. Mild goofiness. Mild. Yeah, but in that scene, Yoda was the comic relief. <laughs> yes. So. I, I guess. I guess. R2 was just R2 being... was the straight robot. He was. <laughs> like, if it was R2 and Yoda, R2 was the straight man. <laughs> oh, no, I need this. I do. Oh, oh, oh. No. <laughs> Luke needs that to eat, you asshole. <laughs> oh, no. I, 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 oh, I know where the Jedi is. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, we are talking Star Wars spoilers. It's listed in the title of this right now. Talk about BB-8 and how awesome that robot is and how it moves the story. He's a fine MacGuffin in that regard. Not a MacGuffin. Like, what do you... He's exactly like R2 in A New Hope as far as how he moves the story. Yeah. He's the MacGuffin. R2's the MacGuffin. Exactly. Uh, it's fine. No, it's fine. And he's cute. And I like... I like... I, I don't know if I'll ever get tired of that bit of, like, people understanding what beeps and growls mean. And that was another really fun moment with Finn where, like, BB-8 is beeping at him and Finn goes, I don't speak that. And you're just like, oh, not everyone can speak that? <laughs> That's fun. There was a bunch of, you know what, there was a bunch of cuteness in this movie and I liked that. I liked when the BB-8 was spinning all around the Millennium Falcon and then he shot out his little grapple hooks and he's like, whoa. <laughs> it's a bunch of cuteness. What else What else do we have to talk about? We talked. Did we talk about the bad CGI? Um, Did we talk much about Han Solo dying? It was a fine death. 
Let's find out. You know, it's sad. You don't want to see Han Solo die. Yeah. But I, d- I you know he was going to have to. I, I did not see that coming. Oh, it was, yeah. I did not How did you it? not see that coming? Because I get, I get into movies. I don't, I don't think about movies when I watch them. I just watch them. I, I saw that coming before I started watching the movie. Oh yeah. No, I, 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 as you know, what I didn't see it coming until he walked out onto the platform, and then it's like, okay, this is happening. But no, that that got me. Let's see here. Uh, Jedi fan, four, two, one. One last thing. I thought Force Awakened executed a familiar story very well, while the prequels executed a different story very badly. It was a great bridge from the old to new trilogy. Executed a different story very. I'm not sure I understand that Jedi fan, but was he saying again? Read it. I thought the Force Awakened executed a familiar story very well. While the prequels didn't 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 execute it as good as the original did. While the I wouldn't say it's better than a new hope. You can, it's hard. You can't. I mean, the the, the four, forty year old movie at this they're, point. They're 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 bumbling around for a large chunk of that movie without a clear direction. It's fun. The early part of that movie. A lot of it's, fun. it's fine. It's fun. Whatever. Fun. But there's not. We have to do this. It's all we gotta run from that. They're very different tonally. I think this one's a lot, a lot more lighthearted. I found myself I, smiling in a, a lot more. And New New Hope is is, and this is why it's hard to this is why it's hard to compare the two is because of that older style of filmmaking. A New Hope is a very slow movie, and this one moves. You know, it it meanders, but it moves. It moves in circles, but it moves. You know, um, a great bridge from the yeah. No, this fits in. I think this fits in very nice with the original trilogy. As far as I'm concerned, the prequels don't exist, and so it's a fine bridge. <laughs> uh, Rob Vader, 12, says, My local theater isn't showing Hateful Eight because Star Wars, Sisters, and some whale movie are taking up all the screens. Is that just bad luck, bad planning, or what? I, I had heard somewhere that Star Wars was not giving their movie to theaters unless the theaters agreed to give up a certain percentage of its screens yeah. to Star Wars. Hmm. Which, I mean, that's where they're making their money anyway. Yeah. But I can't, Why wouldn't they? You know, I mean, exactly. <laughs> but, you know, some theaters want to diver- diversify and they can't. Some whale movie, I mean, that poor whale movie, that's, I mean, that's, that's a bomb and a half. It might be a fine movie. Ron Howard's a great director, but it's just, just not, not nothing. I hear good things about Sisters. I don't care. What about the road ship? <laughs> yeah, the whale movie's a huge, huge bomb. Jack talks about liking the sense of humor. I do like the sense of humor. I, I really enjoyed it. I had a great time in the movie theater. Did Anthony Daniels' acting come off as bad to you? There are a few lines I really cringed in the Rebel base. Who's that? I, Wait, which one's Anthony C-3PO. Daniels? He was probably mad he didn't have a bigger role. <laughs> I've heard I have heard I don't know how true it, true it is that he's a huge arrogant asshole <laughs> yeah, it could be. so it could have just been oh, fuck this uh, why, 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 two lines uh, I have to get in this outfit for two lines does, I, does I even, doubt he was in the outfit you don't, yeah he probably doesn't do the outfit no you know what I he's a he's a robot and he does the robot voice I don't know um, I'm, I'm assuming he was phoning it in that I mean that's yeah. quite possible Afroticus would like to tip us to ask us a question. What do you guys think about Kylo Ren's cross lightsaber actually being useful to stab Finn with the sides? It's fine. It's fine. Well, am I supposed to hate it or love it? I'm, I'm, it's just it's it's this, thing. This That's light, what his lightsaber looks this like. This lightsaber is a whole thing, and he, his lightsaber is janky, like he is. Exactly. I, I think I said this in the half in the bag. Mm-hmm. The the problem isn't the gimmick lightsaber. The problem is, like Darth Maul, having a gimmick lightsaber in place of having a personality. <laughs> yes. Kylo Ren has a lightsaber that kind of matches his that personality. Mirrors. It's flawed. It's yeah. janky. It's not quite right. It's not right, quite right. He's trying so hard. And why don't you love it? <laughs> It's and you know like that I, that was that was really great like when when again he and and uh, Ray are starting their fight 
and their lightsaber like their lightsabers start really close and you can see the perfect straightness of Luke's old lightsaber mm. and his lightsaber is just all like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's like barfing out little redness thing. it's great I think I think you put it very correctly it's a reflection of his personality yeah. and his character so it's, it's appropriate it it's is. appropriate it, of course, like w- scientifically or whatever, it doesn't make sense. But it's a Star it's a, Wars movie. Like, the lightsaber movie. doesn't make sense. Exactly. So don't worry about it. It's fine. It looks great. Um, did you guys notice when the film grade popped up? Darth Maul only know, had three know. lines. Exactly. Darth Maul had a lightsaber in place of a personality. Yes. You gotta give him something to make him stand out. He, hey, he's got a thing. He's got two blades. He's uh. That's his character. You've got two blades on your lightsaber. He's angry. Now act. <laughs> he's ang- you're angry. <laughs> yeah? You want revenge for? You, you, uh, you no, want no, revenge? No, 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 angry revenge. <laughs> now your character wants to do flips. <laughs> you're very good at flips. You're very good at flips. Can you do it now? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you love me, Grandpa Vader? Exactly. Yes. So, yes, that's his yes, whole thing. Yes, it's kind of great. It's his whole shtick. Fanboy. You called him a, a Vader fanboy before. Did I? You did. I don't. Not here. I think we were talking about it downstairs. Okay. And like you're like a Vader. He's a Vader fanboy. And I was like, yes, that's exactly <laughs> like. <laughs> All he sees is like the awesomeness of Vader, you know. Like he can't see the flaws or like, that he's an evil prick or anything. And whoever that giant alien hologram is, used that to turn. It was, it was fine. Everything's fine. He was fine. He's angry. I liked the actor's character choice when Kylo was beating his. Oh, by the way, I liked that too. Which, like you know, like he he shot. He's bleeding, right? Yeah. And like to pump himself up, oh, he's like yeah. punching his yeah. wound. It's like, oh shit, yeah. And he's like, <laughs> oh, I deserve this. That was. I'm he, with the Dick Newton. He hates himself. He hates himself. Yes. He's a good character. Yeah, he really is. I don't understand why he's evil, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find out. I'm sure we'll find. I'm, out. Yeah. No, I well, I know, it, like I said, it also doesn't matter because we didn't know these things about those characters in the original Star Wars movies, so. Uh, would you rather lightsabers were real or hoverboards? Hoverboards. Hoverboards. When are you ever going to use a lightsaber for real? You're just going to accidentally cut up all your shit swinging it around your room. You're going to accidentally kill... You're going you're gonna to cut your flat people. screen TV in half. Yeah. Hoverboards... But then again, the hoverboard, you're going to fall off and break your leg. Yeah. So, you know... Just put another hoverboard six, on your Six back. of one, half a dozen of the other. You need you need to be covered with hoverboards. Hoverboard. Hoverboard. You could probably move thing, heavy things with your oh, hoverboard. That'd be really great. easy. Just like lift your couch on your hoverboard, <laughs> move your couch. Oh, and you wouldn't scrape up your floor? Oh, I want like three hoverboards. That'd be great. Butchers would butchers would hate a lightsaber. They would cut they would burn all of their meat. Oh, because the, can you cook as you slice? Would this be the best like cooking implement ever? Thanksgiving dinner, you just take a raw turkey and you carve it. So butchers, <laughs> butchers would hate lightsabers because they would ruin all their delicious meat. Chefs, chefs would love. The you would lightsaber. have a light sa- like you could. Oh, you could like take a like cut a steak and make like a beef flour. <laughs> a a bloomin' ribeye. Oh my god, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. <laughs> no, it would. Like, yeah, but for like, uh, but uh, like, could you imagine like slicing? Oh, but oh, if you could do it fast enough, sl- a fresh baked loaf of bread, instant toast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tyranny Soros Rex says, cutting up the computer is a is the tantrum of a petulant child who feels powerless. It's character building. You fuck. Yes, it's not, I'm sure he's talking to someone else in the chat. When Kylo oh. Ren goes nuts and he just starts fucking everything up. It's great. Yeah. It's great. He He's a whiny little child, which makes him the anti-Darth Vader. Darth Vader is poised. When he, like, except for that one fuck who he almost kills in the boardroom, all of his... But he doesn't do it with a tantrum. No. He does it calmly. Just calmly and controlly. You don't believe me? Fuck. You know, like, all of Darth Vader's... That was a demonstration, not an outburst. Yes. But everyone below Darth Vader, 
is fucking scared of him. Kylo Ren, like other people are just like, ah, Ky- fucking Kylo. <laughs> He's a fuck up. It's, he can't even find a droid. I mean, is is he even part of this battalion? Why is he here? <laughs> Who's under his command? And mine just Googled lightsaber toasting knife. Nice. Uh, no, I really like that. And Oh, you know, speaking of little comedy moments, when Kylo is cutting up his computer and sparks are flying and peas are flying, then you see those two stormtroopers turn the corner. I have to rewatch that. I heard about it. It's, oh, it's so fun. Like, it's goofy. It's, <laughs> it's another one of those things where, like, they're turning a corner and they see Kylo messing up a room and they just turn around and walk right back around the corner. <laughs> Shabby Orange 101. Uh, says, I. it now feels anyone can use a lightsaber who has read any Tolkien books. What? It now feels anyone can use a lightsaber who has read any Tolkien books. Who would have deserved taking the saber in the entire series of films to make their character more fulfilling? Shabby Orange, are you using a translate software that doesn't quite grasp the meaning of what you're trying to say? I think he's mad that Finn used the lightsaber briefly. Oh. Anyone uh, can use a lightsaber. It's just a tool. It's That's can, that's canon because Han, Han Solo used a lightsaber in... Uh, oh, he cut the tauntaun he, open. He yeah. cut the tauntaun yeah. open. Anyone can use a lightsaber. A Jedi chooses to use a lightsaber as his main weapon. Um, how basically anyone can use his life Snook is bad deteriorating Palpatine clone or a puppet used by Skywalker I, it's like Luke Skywalker is not going to be evil I don't, that's, just, that's just not going to happen especially with the, the ending we got yeah, yeah. That's, that's not going to happen no he's going to be the he's going to be the, the Yoda as far as Snooki is he's concerned pro- he's probably going to eat it in the second who's going to die in the second movie well who died in the second movie I'm not sure if you need someone to die in the second. Oh movie no, before. Yoda died in the, in uh, in. He died in Jedi. Jedi. I, I'm getting them confused. I'm not. I'm not sure what they're going to do as far as that goes. But yeah. what do you what do you think what do you think is going on going on with Emperor Snooki? Uh, here's one thing that I think. Do you, every... do you think? Do you think? Oh well, I'm sorry. Finish that. I was going to say one thing. I think everybody agrees on is he is not that big. Oh yeah, yeah. He's going to be small. He's going to be a small, small man, and that like projection of him as big is, is supposed to be is supposed to be a. Uh, a, a reveal or whatever. Do you think he's going to be that stupid Darth Plagueis that trained Palpatine? He's mentioned in like once in Revenge of the Sith. I killed my old master. Then. Oh no. 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 Who else is that going to be? Someone new. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Or or. Yeah. Or. Okay, I'm listening. Is it the uh, what was left over from the Emperor? <sighs> And he and he uses some sort of force magic to live on as a t- and, his, and he will be he'll be a tiny creature. His personality seems too different. Does I the emperor know. was always joyful in being evil? <laughs> <laughs> Kill them! <laughs> you will now. You will watch your friends die. <laughs> the personality is too. Di- that's what made the emperor mm-hmm. fun. The emperor was fun. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> He was an old man who wasn't bitter because he had everything he ever wanted, yep. and he just loved being he evil. Was reveling in his own film. Reveling in his own power and yep. awfulness. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, no, I don't. I think he's going to be a new character, a new evil guy. You don't. You don't think they're even going to reference that that name that popped up once in the prequels? They, they had one prequel nod in the whole movie, mm-hmm. right? What was what? The one in the in the entire movie they mentioning made, clone troopers. They mentioned like, well, you could get a clone trooper battalion if you want. Oh no, we don't want them. Yeah, uh, I've heard I've heard like the flags hanging up at the one Mog Mothma Palace mm. were from one of the prequels. Oh sure, some kind of parade or something. Oh. But I, I guess that's how much I know about the prequels. That's what I've heard. I don't know. Ooh, that would be great if it was Lord Voldemort. Yes, it's that. That's Lord Voldemort. He's crossed over. He's crossed dimensions from the Harry Potter universe into the Star Wars universe, and the whole thing is actually a commercial for Lego Dimensions. Mm-hmm. Uh, poke Alex in the eye. Two things of note: Kylo Ren has others do his killing, except Max 
versus, or except for Max VS and Han Solo. Who's Max VS? Von Sydow. The old guy at the beginning of the movie. Thank you. I don't know names. Uh, he So he orders others to do his killing. Also Ming the Merciless in the Flash Gordon movie. Among other things. Oh, yeah. Nice. Also, the first thing R2-D2 does when he wakes up is insult C-3PO. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I've never gotten the impression that R two D two likes C three PO. R two tolerates C three PO, and I don't think C three PO realizes this. Right. Like, <laughs> uh, like remember that droids are slaves. Like, and everyone knows that because like they talk about the droids masters, right? They just happen to have the same master all the time. Yeah. And C, you know, R two D two is like, yeah, C three PO, you, C three PO, you butt fucking son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and 3PO is just like, oh, you kid. He's a kidder. He's a kidder. I think that is good. That is fun to note. R2-D2, he's a sassy f- he's a He's a bit of a prick. He's a no-nonsense prick. And that's okay. Sleverino? What, what did Patton Oswalt call? What is totally happening? What? I don't know. He said, uh, oh, my fucking God, Patton Oswalt called it. It's happening. It's totally happening. No, Captain, I didn't understand your Voldemort comment. I just I went off on my own thing because he kind of looked like Lord Voldemort. I, I don't know Harry Potter. I know. I know. I, all I know is Voldemort's a Harry Potter thing. That's he's, all I he's know. He's the main Harry Potter bad guy. And he's like a weird, deformed, bald guy with like a white face. He looked like this alien looked a lot like Voldemort. Okay. Is all you need to know. Um, no, and I, I see some people still referencing like the light, the lightsaber. Anyone can just pick up a lightsaber and turn it on. That that has been canon since. I guess since was there Empire. was there a, was there like a book somewhere that said you have to channel force through it? Does that happen? Maybe the I don't give a shit if it was if it did then they can go fuck, the, the book can go fuck itself. But in in one of the books, as <laughs> as I know people who have read the books, there was mention once that Han Solo may be something called. Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Force sensitive. Where he's not like force powerful, but he has a little bit of force flowing through him, and that's why he was able to I use know. the lightsaber. It's stupid. But it's only in that's... one of the books, and it's stupid. Anyone can turn on a lightsaber. Yeah. It's just it's a piece of metal. Anyone can. Turn maybe that maybe on. Finn's got some force in him. Yeah, it's great. He's force Finn's got some great. force in him. Great. That's how he knew how to get out of there. Okay. Uh, Afro Afrotisius says. Is it possible that someone will end up with a robot hand in Episode Eight, like an Empire? P.S. Here's the explanation for the politics in Seven that was all left out. Thank you, Afropodius, for that. In- they might avoid it because they're hearing a lot of criticism about being too close to Episode Four, A New mm-hmm. Hope, mm-hmm. Star Wars. They're getting a lot of criticism for being too close to Star Wars. And you know what? Fuck this episode shit. Because when I grew up, yeah. it was Star Wars yeah. and The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Right. This episode shit didn't didn't come into prominence till the fucking prequels started coming out. Yeah, I mean episodes helped keep it clear, but we, everyone knows New Hope, Empire, and it wasn't even a New Hope; it was just Star Wars. You're right, but uh, nobody called it a New Hope. No, because it was it was it, it was it was everyone called it Star Wars. It was only called a New Hope after uh, Empire came out, right? and not even then. Not even then. I, I, I think I never really heard it called a new hope when I was younger. Until it was, home it was video? always Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. I wonder when it was first called New Hope, like home video. No, it's still called uh, the case is fucking Star Wars. The on the older cases, I'm sure it's changed now. Someone in the chat, find out when they rebranded as a New Hope. But uh, it, it might not have been a clear line. It might have been like a, just a blur when that happened. But I I, th- I think that like I, I remember them talking about that in the. The uh, George Lucas I, documentary. I, I never knew anybody who casually called it A New Hope. Ah, okay. Oh, they're saying A New Hope was added after Empire. In the crawl, but as far as the the way people commonly referred to it. Oh, well, yeah. That's just in different. conversation, it was always Star Wars. Sure. Oh, sure, sure. Um, where were we? Robot hand. Will anyone end up with a robot hand? No. I, I'm going to say no. I don't care. Uh, yeah, I want to. That's not, yeah. I'm sorry, like, the whole, I mean, people get stuff cut off all the time. If, if I might roll my eyes. That's a bit too much. Yeah. It's I, a bit too much as it is. That could be an eye roll. 
if someone gets a hand cut off. And I, I like for the record, officially, I do think it's a bit too close to New Hope, okay. right. structure wise and everything. Oh, the, this the, movie? the new Death Star. Here's the plans and art. I mean, BB-8. Yeah. And, I, and I think that is a valid and justified criticism. It wasn't enough to completely ruin the movie for me. Like I said, the important thing, especially coming after the prequels, is yeah. that the characters are fun. Yes. That's the important thing, mm. ultimately. Yeah. So. Right. It's, it's very close to New Hope. Uh, but uh, Rob Vader 12, during Ray's vision scene, when she finds the lightsaber, they, they sample both Alec Guinness and Ewan McGregor. They chop Alec's afraid to say Ray. Interesting. Yeah, I very heard about interesting. that. Interesting. That's yeah, very interesting. I, I liked her visions. I thought I thought they were neat. I thought I thought it was uh it was an interesting way to handle that. It it also wasn't very like her visions made me think that instead of being Luke's daughter, she was just a student. I don't think they're going to go the crazy kid route though with the the, the, the trainees. And why just save Ray? And she's gonna she's totally gonna be Luke's daughter. I think I think she was the only one left. I don't know. I don't know. I like to me, like Luke's daughter is so obvious. I don't so? know. Yeah, I mean, well, I get, you're so? right. I, by the way, I guess you're right. <laughs> I guess you're right. Where it's just like, oh, it's so obvious. Well, I guess it must be true. But like, I, I want to believe that people were genuinely surprised at the whole Darth Vader father thing. They might not try and play it as a big reel. It might be casually mentioned, like Kylo Ren being Han Solo's uh, son was in this. It might come out early in the next one. I don't know. Mm, I suppose. There's some mention of lightsabers having weird and unintuned gyroscopic like behavior that makes them hard to yield difficult fast and that could be true like i don't think that There's was someone uh, oh, oh sorry go ahead oh uh shamish d says i feel like i remember some mention of lightsabers having weird and unintuitive gyroscopic like behavior that makes them hard to yield difficult vastly reduced through extensive training and high force aptitude that was never mentioned in any of the movies nerd first of all nerd Second of all, it's that a it, thing you wave around, and it's got a glowing blade. Never in any of the movies. And remember, like Luke is some asshole farm <laughs> kid, and sure he's like force, he's like high with the force. But Obi Wan hands this asshole kid the sword, and he's like, "Whoa!" Here's, here's the thing with lightsabers. Here's the thing. All right, if you if you don't have the force, you're not going to want to wield one because your ass is going to get shot. Because you can't block bullets that's right. unless you have the force. And that's, that's right. what makes the lightsaber useful. You can block bullets. Right. So if you're worried about everybody just using a lightsaber, that's not going to happen because they'll get shot. <laughs> right. That's why people don't use samurai swords in gangs. <laughs> <laughs> they use gats. <laughs> You talk to Rich Evans about this. He's an expert. <laughs> He's an expert on gang warfare. No, well, and, and that's why Jedis use lightsabers is because they are more of a defensive weapon. You yeah, know. yeah. They are, they are not an attacking weapon. They are meant for defense and precise movements. But, no, it's, it's a hunk of metal with a crystal inside. Anyone can turn it on. And I want to say that's canon. Why did Leia hug Rey after she got... Well, I think Rey hugged Leia. Because everybody loves Rey because she's a Mary Sue. No. That much is true. She st it doesn't ruin her character for me, but she is a Mary Sue. I'm going to call her like 80% Mary Sue, and I'm going to say it doesn't matter that she's a Mary Sue. That she's 80% Mary Sue. I think Rey hugged Leia because Leia just lost her husband, Han Solo. Mm-hmm. Like that's a normal. That's by the by the way. That's a, how normal people. Oh, you, your husband just died. Oh, I'm gonna give you a hug. Oh, your son just killed your husband. Oh yeah, I'll give you a hug for that. That's a normal <laughs> thing people do. <laughs> do lasers travel at the speed of light? Okay. Yes, they do. But in Star Wars, they use space lasers, and yes. space lasers do not travel at no. the speed of light. They either travel faster or slower, or the same. They travel at the speed of a science fiction blast. They travel at the speed that an editor decides in post looks good. Do we, do we know they're shooting lasers or are those just some kind of like, maybe it's some plasma. kind of plasma, whatever. 
The answer is whatever. The answer is it's a fucking Star Wars. The, it's a war in stars. Do you know that my four-year-old asked me why it was called Star Wars? He didn't see any actual war. He saw a, a, like, saw like a, a battle. Skir- he saw a skirmish. There were battles. And I had to have it. I was, I was just like, well, they were fighting. They were fighting like a war. And it was in space, like where there are stars. And he goes, oh. <laughs> I tried not to sound condescending. I mean, he's four. <laughs> so I'm not going to be condescending to him. But it's just like, <sighs> there's a war in the stars, man. That's why it's called Star Wars. <laughs> Hmm. So, <laughs> that's right. It's not well. It, it's sci-fi, but it's not science fiction. It's science fantasy, still in the sci-fi genre. But it's a fantasy movie in space. All right. Here's something I want to address. There's something you want to address. M- MC Lucas is saying, "How bullshit is it that they just completely glossed over how Luke's lightsaber ended up in the basement instead of floating around in a cloud planet?" We don't see Luke's lightsaber end up on the planet. We see his lightsaber fall into a shaft in a giant space station. Yes. We never saw it fall into the planet. Right. Did we? I'm trying to remember. Do we see it after it, his hand gets cut off? Does it fall out when he does? Because I don't remember that happening. No, we do not see it I just see assume it, it was sitting at the bottom of some kind of shaft in, in Cloud City. We do not see it fall. That easily could have been. I don't. I don't recall Luke's hand awkwardly falling out of the hatch that opens with Luke. No, like he doesn't follow his hand down. Yeah. Like the hand falls, and Earlier. then he has his back yes. and forth with Vader, and then he chooses to jump. No, his hand could have landed. I'm, I'm assuming a worker found it in a severed hand one day and was very terrified. But then saw what it was like. I could sell this, <laughs> and probably sold it for a good price. By the way, right? Yeah, he loses it when he loses his hand. So that that could have easily been in Cloud City. A city started by a smuggler. So there's probably some shady people around there just looking for loose change. Or or one of Lando's people found it and Lando got it to Leia's people and it ended up with Mog, whoever, who knew Leia at some point. I don't know. Very reasonable. I, uh, Very reasonable. Kylo Ren's lightsaber opens the idea of broadswords, great sword lightsabers. I'm down. You know, it's, uh, whatever. I, it's I, it's I, fun. I do Sword. It's fine. Everything's fine. I hope. I hope the other movies aren't filled with that many Jedi. To say the honest truth. <laughs> I don't. I don't want uh, another eight thousand people fight going on. No. I'm fine if the only Jedi's we see are are Rey, Luke, Ren, and, and Snook. I will be supremely disappointed if there's another 80-person yeah. lightsaber fight. Yeah. Yeah. Here's here's how the last movie is going to end, though. Hmm. So this movie starts after Luke has failed to train a new generation of Jedi. Yeah. Because one of his students, Kylo Ren, murdered all the other ones. Mm-hmm. Here's how this movie really ends. Okay. This trilogy? Here's how the trilogy. Here's how the entire trilogy really ends. Mm-hmm. Is uh, Rey will become a Jedi Master or whatever. Mm-hmm. A true Jedi. And she'll, be ha- she'll have to fight the last boss. And they'll be going back and forth a lot about, like, oh, the nature of good and evil. And we will always fight each other. And uh, Rey will kill the evil guy and then kill herself ending all Jedi. Oh, you're insane. That would be the best thing that could happen. <laughs> I'm I'm not even I'm not even convinced that uh... <gasps> Wait, Dr. Grunter, Hunter Hanker, light nunchucks. <laughs> <laughs> the deliminator. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not even convinced Luke's going to die. Luke might restart his school at the end with Ray. I don't know. I don't know, oh, but goodness. I'm not I'm not convinced. I don't know what to see. <laughs> yep, that's right. Frost and Ambassador, Ray will kill herself, there'll be no more Jedi, and then Disney will never make another Star Wars movie. I'm, I'm going to say the end of this trilogy <laughs> is Ray fighting alongside of Kylo Ren mm-hmm. against Emperor Snook. Yeah. And and or Kylo, whoever the real bad guy is, Kylo yeah. Ren getting mortally wounded, yeah. and then maybe dying in like Leia's arms or something. Oh, sure. If they if they want to bring Carrie Fisher back, 
We'll yeah, see. You know, no offense to Carrie Fisher. I don't think she cares. No. Oh, no, you know what? Not anything about how she looked. Uh, I just felt like her mouth wasn't functioning. I, I, I joked a lot about her bangle. But the problem is, I think, the plastic surgery. Her mm-hmm. mouth is kind of... Her mouth is not functioning. No, no, no. Like, listen. Yeah. Everyone ages. I'm not going to make fun of how she looks. Her mouth was not functioning properly. I, I'll agree with that. Yeah. I will agree with that. There you go. Yeah, well, Kylo will have... He'll have a, a redemption, but he still has to die simply because he killed Han Solo. But he is... I do believe he's going to help fight the big bad guy. Yeah. And then he'll, as, as a final act of goodness, he'll sacrifice himself. Yeah, yeah. Much like Darth Vader did. But he still has to die just because he killed Han Solo. Oh, of course. Yeah. There's no question. I mean, he's, he's going to die. Oh, my God, a light mace. I would take a light mace. A, a big chain with a <sighs> glowing ball on the end. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I think the, the question here, I, th- I think I saw it a while back. Here's, here's an important question for you, Rich. Mm-hmm. Will there be a new lightsaber design for the next movie? What do you mean? Oh, I, I hope not. I don't think so. I don't I don't think so, but I hope not. I hope not too. I don't think so. They don't need it. That's that's the real thing. So do we want to pay someone to design a new lightsaber? We can make all these new toys. And then someone goes, Yeah, but we already have all these old lightsaber toys. They're still selling like hotcakes. Let's just raise the price on them. I, I don't I don't know exactly what the fuck they're going to do yet. We'll yeah. see. It's a we'll see. As long as it's cool, I don't care. As long as it's cool. All right. Any anything else? Mm. Um, I'm trying to think of. I'm tr- I'm trying to th- remember the movie. It was it was way that was a long time ago this morning. I think we've talked the fuck out of it. We really have. I am surprised we went this long, but it's Star Wars. Don't forget the eggs. <laughs> You're right. You're right, Batman. <laughs> I won't. I won't forget the eggs. So um, how about that new Star Trek TV show? I want to, I'll watch that Star Trek trailer again with the Beastie Boys. Oh, God. Duh! There's hope in the fact that Simon Pegg hated the trailer. Maybe the trailer isn't indicative of the film. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Do you, um... We should, we should stop streaming now. Yeah. The, the, the problem is that you have to hit the button. Because it's over there. I was giving people a last second to get in there. Oh, well, oh yeah, no, you can I'll give them a last second. Okay, we gotta, we gotta read shit anyway. Huh? Oh yeah, well, yeah, we have shit to read. You're right. Turn off, you. you Maybe f- Luke doesn't know Ray is his daughter. Force Awakens. Turn Maybe, off. How would Luke not know? Well, I guess he didn't give birth to her. Wait, how did what? Maybe Luke doesn't know that Ray is his daughter. Well, how do you know he doesn't know? Well, that's what that's what they're saying. Maybe Luke doesn't know. Maybe he. I, why wouldn't he know? Why Why does he have to not know? There's right. No, obviously, she was deliberately put on the planet, uh, an attempt to hide her. That's what we can all assume. Yeah. <clears throat> if If we're going to go along, uh, eh, it's weird seeing me on that delay. If we're going to go along a new hope lines. Watch the new Neil Breen trailer. I will. Wait, watch it right now. Neil Breen trailer reaction. No, what is, oh, yeah, I'll go find it. Someone link it, link me to it. Grunky Peepquinox. Halibut Barn. I'm sorry, what? Halibut Barn. Halibut Barn? Halibut Barn. <laughs> Mokey B85, 18 motherfucking months in a row. The Rob Roy. Hell of butt barn. Hap 78. <laughs> and Steampink Girl. Thank you for subscribing. We really appreciate it. It's it's true. Oh, oh man. Hold on. The trailer here we're gonna watch we're watching the trailer. I'm crying out loud. I, I know those rocks. We're gonna watch the trailer for Pass Through, the new Neil Breen film, and we're gonna watch it right now. What? Did you see there was a tiger on the Yeah, a I saw that. Oh yeah. my god, he's a heroin addict. <laughs> I am not of this earth. I am artificial intelligence from far into the future. I have taken on this human body 
in order to communicate with the humans, I could move from one time to another. <laughs> this man is brilliant. <laughs> He's a performance artist. He has to be. This whole thing is an Adult Swim bit. Yeah. yeah. Neil Breen is an Adult Swim bit. What happened to it? The trailer's not loading. The trailer's. The trailer. Oh, hold on. We're gonna. <laughs> let, it, let it buffer. Let it buffer. I gotta let it. I gotta let it buffer, guys. This is amazing. I'm watching the trailer for the new Neil Breen movie. You can watch it at PassThroughFilm.com. Okay. Well, let's read this, the, the donation. Oh, sorry. Uh, Mr. Creepy says... Yes. If I sent you guys some games you otherwise would have no interest in playing, Mortal Kombat, Gex, Donkey Kong Country, as well as an extra Steam tip, would you consider streaming it? Happy holidays. We would consider streaming it even without the stream tip. Um, no. <laughs> Ge I have fond memory of Gex. Fuck Gex. I have fond memories yeah, of Gex. Do you really want to spend the night playing Mortal Kombat and, and Donkey Kong Country? Not Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong Country, Country might be fun. Uh, I've say... talked about Donkey Kong Country. I have play I avoided Gex. playing it for superficial reasons. It's it looks ugly. It's got that it's got that ugly pseudo 3D look. I play some Gex. Gex the 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 spy gecko? No. No. I Mortal would. Kombat is just kind of dull. Hey, we play, we, you play a couple rounds of Mortal Kombat, play a little Gex do a little Donkey Kong. Make a whole, like a Genesis night of it. Was that Genesis? No, that was like Sega Saturn. Okay, I'm just, I'm just not going to not gonna make any guarantees for, for a Steam tip. I mean, I have no, in, I honestly, I have no interest in the games. Not necessarily, but possibly. I guess, is, okay. We, listen. Don Donkey Kong we, Country might be fun. We, we have that's one I avoided. full of games. Just for superficial reasons. Right. Maybe I should give that one another chance. I don't know, but... All right, here we go. All right, Neil Breen continuing. The planes of space and time. Accountants and CEOs are missing. It's as if all the harmful people on Earth are disappearing. We are revolt against the politicians, the corruption, and the injustices that we all know. Isn't that betraying the public's trust? If it can be destroyed by the truth... <laughs> Deserves to be destroyed by the truth. <laughs> Human evolution has ended, and there can be no further advancement. The turning point is now. The cleanse has begun. I live. <laughs> He's a madman. Oh god! It, oh god! We got a buffer again. Look at the pile of bodies. Look at how they cut off. Oh god! <laughs> this is beautiful. Humans must continue the cleanse in order to survive as a species. Jesus. I love Neil Breen so much. Breen. Oh, man. Listen, yes, we should do a Breen best of the worst when it comes out. More Breen. I don't know if we could take three Breen in a, in a row. No, I would be probably wiser to dole them out anyway. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's so good. We don't we don't really plan best of the worst in advance. It'll it'll happen. I'm sure it'll happen. We, I just don't know when. We we the shelves that you see in Best of the Worst are real shelves full of movies. Yeah. And usually like an hour before we film, it's like eh, yeah, this, this, and this. We have a list. We've never used it. We have we've we went we, we took like a couple hours and made a list of, of like great pairings. We have never once used that list. <sighs> A special conversation with Neil Breen? Oh, my God. I would love that. Make that happen, Internet. All right. Last, okay. last things. Last things. Ephroticus. Ooh. You said that really well. Thank you. I always I always stumble that name. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. No, I'm just... Uh, you want to do the last one? No, that was it. There's one more. So, oh, Sleverino. S probably Sleverino. Like Steverino, but a sleeve. Sleverino. Sleverino. Slever, sleever. I think it's I think it's Sleeverino. 
like Steve Arino. Thank you for subscribing. We really appreciate it.